And we are the Other People Show. Thank you for joining another edition. This is episode, I think it's episode 38 of yeah. season three of the Other People Show. I don't know how you remember all that stuff. I, I have it. You know, I my life might seem like it's an exciting life, and it is at times. <laughs> but sometimes I have had time to myself, and how do I often spend that time? Doing, making lists. Working, yeah, I'm working on the show. Yeah, working on the show, doing things like that. So how have you been? Good. Yeah, it's been a good week. I, there was something I was going to – something really good happened this week that I was going to tell you about, but I don't remember what it was. It'll come back to me. But, uh, yeah, good. How about you? Um, you know, i got to be honest. It's um, – I was thinking about topics on the way down to uh, Felicia's. I'm broadcasting from her place today. And we're pretty honest on the show, and I was thinking about a lot of the shows that you've been on with me and Talitha and stuff in the past, and um, also how there's been a, like, we brought a lot of stuff from our personal lives onto the show. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> Kinsley had mentioned that she really liked the show Bennington that was on. Yeah, so Bennington yeah. is a spawn of the Ron and Fez show after Fez retired. And one of the things that I liked about that show, and you've heard me mention throughout the years, is it's theater of the mind, but the audience doesn't know what's real and what isn't real. You know, mm -hmm. what we, you know, what we, what's a gag, I guess. So I say all that to say that I'm going to try to be more open and honest on the show and let the audience members decipher between what's real and what's, it, what isn't real. Just gotcha. to be more interesting. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Makes me nervous. Okay. <laughs> so I only say that to say that, you know, it's been a, it's been a rather um, kind of a difficult week, to be okay. honest. Yeah, I, um, it's not been bad. And I was very, I want to say to the audience out there, Jake got me some very nice shoes. <laughs> on the, I'll, I'll show this very... Very some light. NMDs. Here, here's the line. Here's the bottom of them. Mine are nice and dirty. So now we have twin shoes. Yes, very cool. So, uh, um, very comfortable and very light. Like, very, very light. When I picked up the box, I was like, wow, I, I didn't expect, you know, so, just air. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's been a little bit of a tough week. Um, okay. And I'm trying to get over this. And, uh, but other, I mean, creatively, it's been, I've not been able to, I don't know if you get this way, but when you're not, and, and people out there listening, when you're not able to like really pursue your passion or what you, what drives you when, mm -hmm. when you get stuck in the rut. And for a while, I was having all this creativity. And that's kind of slowed down due to weather, due to, uh, you know, COVID increase and things like that. So uh, whenever that happens, that kind of brings me down. Do you, do you ever get in kind of a rut like that or anything? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, 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 the time change threw me for a loop, and I got into a giant rut with that. Um, I would say that probably lasted about a month. Really? Yeah. And then once the time, like, once you just accept that it, the time change is trash – then I was able to kind of bounce back out of it. But it, yeah, no, definitely does put you in a rut. Yeah, because, it, well, see, it, it's it, the time change, the, the, you know, it's getting dark much earlier. It's colder. And you're in Virginia now still, right? Yeah, still here. So we I'd, probably had very similar weather from here to there, or, you know, close. Yeah. Um, also, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll throw in that, uh, you know, I've ceased taking medication that I was on because mm -hmm. you saw at the beginning when we started back the show, um, I, I told you once, I think that I was nervous about doing the show again and mm -hmm. I was, I don't, and I was a little bit shaky and, and stuff like that. And that was due to, uh, you know, that medication, but instead of just quitting all of a sudden I've slowly quit. So it wouldn't be a sudden drop off, mm -hmm. but, um, those, those feelings of sadness and, uh, heartbreak still linger on. So 
I know of a lot of people, you know, if, if you go on Instagram and you look up one little thing on there, I would go in there and, and read something now when I'm using the phone for Instagram. Um, you know, like, for example, like five lessons to learn from a heartbreak. That's just mm-hmm. an example. And you would, you know, each screen would have like a different lesson. So if you accidentally click on one of those kind of things, the next time you go on Instagram, your whole main page will be like all these little things. that will be like how to get over the heartbreak, what to do if he or she doesn't call, things like this. So I'm like, oh, no, I unleashed uh, a floodgate. So now – Now it reminds you every single day. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Or I'll be checking the, um, the YouTube uh, studio – and I'll check the videos. We're averaging about 205 views per day on the channel. So That's not good. bad. Right. Um, but we can continue to progress upward. And it'll be like, I'll scroll through the videos, and there's, there'll be some videos where, uh, you know, like Victoria's on there or something. And I'm like, it, it'll just happen to be a moment where she, like, maybe looks up and has, like, a, you know, that, uh, like, a cute half smile or something. And I'm like, out of all the clips, I, I want it to be, like, a, a <laughs> clip where, she doesn't look good. Or she's, something like that. she's like screaming at someone. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You know, not, not the like little, Oh, like uh, there's this one where I say something about making a pinky promise. And I could tell in the moment that it caught her off guard because we were just kind of improving the scene, but I could see it for a split second. So when I was, happened to look up the other day, I saw that moment and I was like, I remember that. And it made me kind of sad. And uh, I'm like, I don't want to remember those kind of moments because it's not really beneficial. No. You had mentioned months ago, um, it, I do have all the good memories on a lot of them on video. So that's, you know, that's good, but it's also not good. I was going to say, is that, is that good or is that not good? See, I watched eternal sunshine of the spotless mind. Have you watched that before? Uh, Many, many years ago. Yeah. So, and this was an interesting question, and I was going to ask Kinsley about this or anyone that's listening on Instagram or, or Facebook Live, is has there been like a heartbreak or any kind of, doesn't even have to be a heartbreak, but a memory where you would want that memory completely erased f- from your mind? You know what I mean? Have you ever mm-hmm. experienced anything where you're like, I wish that I could just totally erase that that person or that situation ever existed is that a positive thing like it was like a really good memory that you don't want to bring up because of nostalgia's sake or a memory where you're like man i was a total douchebag and i wish i never remember that again see i i don't know like i i I don't know there's been a lot of times when i could be personally like you know i've been a jerk here i've been a a a-hole you know things like that Mm -hmm. and you know in the last situation as you know as for, for those that didn't know, you were kind of my life coach, you know, for a while. Oh, boy. And it was, I'm surprised you're still functioning. I'm, I'm still standing like the old Elton John song says. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, you know, you and then uh, Lacey helped me a lot as my kind of my female life coach. Um, I would walk with and I would tell her disappointing things that I had, I had done. She would give me that mean look, and I would be disappointed. Hang my head down in shame and be disappointed. And um, the other day at dinner, I actually inadvertently made her cry with revealing a reckless thing that I had done months ago. Even you don't know about this. I'm so ashamed. Okay. And I'm not going to say on the show because I'm going to be open and honest, but not but, that. Uh, yeah. You know, they're, they're, I'm not going to pull back the curtain. All the way. <laughs> Just, you got to keep some secrets for for season four. For, yeah, exactly. So, but you know, you really helped me, and uh, you know, the winter is a, like down a lot for you know a lot of people. A lot of people are down mm-hmm. in the winter months. Do you get that at all? The, the oh, winter? for sure, I do. I usually like early, like when winter starts. It's a like right now, like it's a kind of a mess until like around here to the new year and then it's like oh this is fun and exciting and then january sets in and it's like all right and then february and you're like this just can't end fast enough yeah i'm telling you if i had my way i would live in america that's it (laughs) yeah no i would live in america for seven months a year and i would live in australia 
I was going to say Australia. Five months. Hands down, I would live in Australia for five months a year, and I would just always be surrounded by warm weather. Because I, I like cold, but the more and more I'm like, I'd rather just go visit cold yeah. rather than live in cold. Plus, also, if you're in warm weather scenarios, you always almost have an outdoor location. You can use oh. natural lighting. It's beautiful, beautiful to film year-round. Yep. And my thought always was, if I live near the beach or a warm climate, see, I have a thing about being lonely all the time. So mm -hmm. Even though I like being alone, I don't like feeling lonely. Mm -hmm. So um, I was like, if I live in a warm climate or near the beach, people would be like, oh, you live near the beach? Oh, yeah, I'll come on down. So I'll always have a constant group of people wanting to come visit. Um, whether that's the case or not, who knows, you know. Um, we need so. to get to those warm climates. Yeah. We got to get to those warm climates where even if it's like winter, and it gets dark early. Yeah, you can still like go outside, and it still feels okay. And then yeah. during the days, you can just enjoy the sun. Ah, oh, we gotta get we gotta get to one of those climates. We really do. I mean, ASAP. I, like and like you know, I've and like I've I've been in like we've we've done. Uh, you know, I guess the birthday was the last thing we produced. Mm hmm. Oh, hey. You're welcome to join if you'd like to join. No? No. no. Come on in. The camera repels so many oh, people. Know, and I'm like, if Jake and I can do this, anyone can do it. Anybody can do it. Yes. It's not sure. nearly as hard as we make it look, you know. <laughs> you are like camera ready no matter what time of day. Guys can get up. You don't have to put on makeup. It's high praise. Hair is good. I mean, like it's it's a it's a thing. I did need a little makeup under here. What I what I did think about doing, and I this is a God's honest truth. I swear to everyone out there, I got here a little early for a pre production of the show, right? Yeah. So I was going to see if she would make my eye like like a make me have a black eye, but I was going to do the entire show as if I just had a black eye and see if anyone would ask what <laughs> happened to the eye. For no reason. I'll punch you later. Okay. Mm. Yeah, so, might as well do it the real way. Yeah. Method acting. Yes. Well, I was punched in the jaw a few weeks ago. Yeah, I remember that. Did you Did you see that? That you told me about it. Okay. It was awful. Yeah, it's been since taken down. I was uh, asked for it to be taken down from YouTube, um, but it was on its way to being viral. You were asked for it to be taken down. Yeah. Well, someone asked for me to take it down. Oh. Okay. The other participants. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the compliment as well. So, you know, I know it, like, like it's so weird. I was, I was thinking about perception and uh, how people perceive like outside looking in. Now outside looking in, you were telling me I, when we did one of the last shows uh, at WMMT, it was me, you and Jeremiah. And you were talking a little bit about the dark times that you had in Kentucky when you first got there and stuff. But outside, the outside people looking in at your life, would they have known that those were dark times? Because in all honesty, I didn't realize those were dark times for you at the time until you mm. mentioned it years later. When, when, when I went to Kentucky, probably not because I didn't really know anybody. I mean, I would like, I would put on my show for class, but I didn't know anybody. Yeah. But when I let, was leaving Kentucky, that's when I had Facebook. Yeah. And that's when I started like writing. I, I had like the, uh, the depressed picture where I had like a beanie on and I had my hair and I was just kind of like this. I still remember that. Mm -hmm. That was actually like, um, that was like my picture for a long time. But well, one of the reasons was because every time like the highlight of my like the highlights of my day or week or whatever was when we would talk or when we would like play music or do something when you came to visit those few times. Yeah. Yeah. Like those were the highlights. So that's why I was like, but then as, as Kentucky progressed, it was good. And then at the end it was terrible again. Yeah. So it like, it, it was like bookend by trash. Yeah. <laughs> but the beginning was great or the middle was great. I mean, now looking back, I, um, and speaking about playing a, a gig, um, I posted a, I shared a video today, and it was when we played the Acoustic Coffee House. Oh, yeah, I saw that. One of our, our, our greatest show yeah. to date. Yeah. What yeah. year was that, 2004? Yeah, did you, watch, 
Which one? You liked it, but I don't know if you watched it. Why would I not watch it if I liked it? I know some people are just generous. Some people do. Yeah, they do, don't they? I do it. The most romantic song ever written. The the performance, did you? Maybe I just liked it and didn't watch it. Did you? (laughs) I don't know. We'll have to look back. Okay. Oh, it was just today. Okay. But yeah, that was in 2004, and that was one of the best shows, probably the best show we've ever done. You know what we're going to do this summer? We got to do a show. Uh, a show. Things we, are going to be, by this summer, things are going to be close to normal again. I'm telling you it's going to happen, and a show is going to take place. I'm coming down there. Show's going to take it's That is the number two location on my list of places to visit as soon as I can visit places. Right. Well, we need to do a show, and I also want to, we'll have, uh, maybe we'll get Aaron Lee on the show, and maybe when you come in, we can have a recording session set up, and we can record a song. Let's do it. Because we're good at recording things in one or two takes quickly. Yeah. um, Efficiently. And uh, And sometimes we're good at writing the songs when we're sitting outside a couple hours before we're actually going to go record it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, uh, I go back sometimes and listen to the, the songs like that one popped up in the memories and, uh, we need to do another album. (laughs) We, we really do because now the technology is so much better than then. Yeah. We get it easier. We got to get the whole band back together. (laughs) Man. With the, the Rolling Stones shirt and everything. Oh Lord. Just do a, (laughs) Oh, you know, I was just solo after solo after solo. I will say this out of all the things that we've done, all the things that are on recordings and videos, none of the recording session inside the studios and video. Nothing. We have a few photographs. I still like one of my throwbacks. I almost posted it today. I threw a, put a throwback uh, from UBA wise up today, even though it's Friday. Um, But one of my throwbacks a couple of my throwbacks are from that studio session that we had. Yeah. That's the only studio session I've ever had in my life. Really? Ever. Now, the, the, you know... Yep. Yep. Wow. Now, I do remember when we were, um, we were coming up. I got the Robbie shirt on. Mm-hmm. I still have that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Because I had to order that from his website. So I was like, no way I'm getting rid of those shirts. Oh, you know? heck no. No. I've got, I think I've got three or four different ones. Talitha and I one time got into an argument because she'd worn a, a Robbie shirt that I had ordered. And her head had stretched the neck of the shirt. And I, I made a big deal about that. And we, you know, that's how petty I, I used to be. Hey, the neck stretch. I have a tiny head. I have a tiny, I have like no neck and a tiny head. So when I have like a shirt that's like stretched, yeah, I get so bad. Like that's one of the, that's one of the things that drives me the crazy. Like, head, like, head, like don't put so if you if your head can't fit through the hole of the shirt, don't be forcing it in. And for most people who have big heads, like a big neck does not bother them. One no. like it looks great on them, but for tiny head Jake, if it's if it's like here, then you're like, oh, what is that? Like a boat, scoop neck boat shirt? Yeah. No. Yeah. Shut up. So. Stretch my shirt. Yeah. I, I got into it with Talitha about that because she, we were, we were getting ready to go to Bob Evans and it was after church mm-hmm. on a Sunday and we were in Woodbridge, Virginia, not far from uh, your hometown, mm-hmm. not too far from there. So, uh, after church, I go in and I, you know, take off my church clothes and I'm starting to put on a t-shirt and I put the Robbie shirt on. It's Does it stretched. go just right through you? It's true. It's like I, at your feet. I say, look at this. Did you wear this shirt? And I'd seen her wear it. And she said, yes. I said, your head stretched this shirt. She went, what? I said, you have a kind of a big head. It stretched this shirt. And you know how sweet Talitha was. Oh yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, I'm not proud of that moment, but she did get upset about that. Yeah. And Bob Evans' dinner wasn't – it wasn't a good lunch. It, it, wasn't wasn't. A, it wasn't a typical Bob Evans. No. I think, honestly, that was the last time I've been to Bob Evans. <laughs> <laughs> I think it ruined for that, that moment forward. 
I can't tell you last time I've been to a Papa Evans. Did you ever have a country cooking? Have you ever been to country cooking before? No, I don't think so. It was kind of like a cheap Bob Evans, like okay. a very cheap Bob Evans. I've been there. That that was our big that was our big outing every week was we would go to country cooking to the to the buffet, and Is they it? they officially closed this year because of COVID. Like they didn't they didn't make the cut. Wow, that was part of my childhood. It's gone. Wow, that's crazy. So done. So, I was gonna see what you thought about this if uh, so i'm getting back into the dating world a little bit so i thought about with each relationship that i get into that i might go into the relationship and giving the female this book okay as as a warning <laughs> as a warning you know to see if they, if they see if they run away. If they don't run away and they read the book, then you yeah. you might just need to marry that person. Yeah, yeah, maybe so, maybe so. Now, um, I do, you know, I do love getting into these topics um, because, for one, you don't know what's coming next. No. <laughs> but let me ask you this on all seriousness: Do you like things that? You know, sometimes you've been into the show and we've had nothing planned, and sometimes you've been in and we've had the itinerary and we followed it pretty, pretty well. What shows do you find? Is there one you gravitate toward more, or, or find that goes more smooth, or or what? I I put myself in different mindsets for them. These yeah. shows, I kind of put myself in of like it's going to be just <laughs> us chatting. But yeah. if I think if we were so to me, this is like a Zoom show, and it's like all right, this is a Zoom show. But if I had to, but I miss like the radio shows where we were like, we came in, we played parts, we did sketches, yeah. uh, we played music. Those to me, I like the, I like that, but I, it doesn't, this doesn't, that doesn't work in this format. No, I, I do miss the, the, the bits that we could do. We could do some pre-recorded bits. Mm -hmm. We could play music, you know. Callers. Bits. Yeah. Yeah. I do miss that. And it adds to the show. We're going to get that back one of these days. By this summer. Yeah. Coming yes. back. Yes, we are. Full full force. Um, uh, what do you? What about you? Which one do you like better? You know, I feel, honestly, that the show is smoother when we have, when, when there's been, like, topics we already have that we're going to get. But sometimes, like today, last week, it's um, – the shows are really good and there's no topics really pre you know, discussed beforehand. Mm -hmm. Now I always try to go into the show with things that we could talk about. Like I, I messaged Felicia about some things. I looked up some things. I always listen to Ron and Fez and I'm going to send you some of their, some clips I think you should listen to, to maybe get into them. I think that um, Kinsley had said that she had listened to Bennington and the Bennington show is like probably the last five years. I think Ron and Fez retired their show in 2015 but it's it's a completely different show than any show that i've ever listened to and it's always caught me and you've heard me mention that show for at least a decade probably yeah i mean at least and it's a show that i still listen to you know i guess the 2006 until 2010 is probably the golden years the x in <laughs> years but i would love that's what i like about the spontaneity of our, our show sometimes because it kind of blends reality and the, um, you know, show. Like yeah. a lot of people, a lot of people say, I can't believe you said that on the show, but I'm like, it's a show. Yeah. Like we're getting something to people. We're here to entertain. Yes. They're not coming to our show to learn anything. <laughs> no, not at all. And also to be entertained when we're, when we're doing the show. Um, someone said this is charming. So our oh. show is very, very nice. That's uh, Farah. So thank you, Farah. Thank you. Very nice. But it's it's kind of like I come to the show. Like when you come in, when we come into the um, on the movie show, we know the questions. We've kind of studied the film. We're coming to it with an opinion, and we're going to agree or disagree or have varying opinions on the film. And it can't go much. You know, it's it's the film. Mm -hmm. Whereas this, you know, I don't, I don't know if you ever come into the show unless I ask you beforehand or if you have any ideas. 
What's going to be discussed today? I don't really know. Here's one thing. I, I do have an agenda for today of one thing that I do want to discuss, but we can wait until the end of the show okay. for that. But no, I see, it's funny because the movie show, since I run the movie show and you run the other people's show, I keep it so structured. Like I literally still do a timer I'm every single that section do. that we do. Yeah. It, just because I like to keep it on track. Uh, but then for these shows, this is your show. Like, this, you host this show, I yeah. host that show. We'll put this it that way. A chaos. I don't want to say chaos. It's it's fly by the seat of your pants. Show. Yeah, but I it, but I I honestly feel like when we were doing some of the shows when I was in the you know Manassas, there were actually more things honestly written out all the time. And it just seems like the way the structure of the other people show is the structure that my life is going through at the time, mm -hmm. like a transition. But I do think that we put on some entertaining shows. Yeah, I think so. I, I, I feel entertained afterwards. So I feel entertained. <laughs> so who cares if anybody else is? True. Now, did you ever do, was there ever shows that we did and then we can get into what you wanted to mention any shows that we've ever done the zoom show on the movies or the midnight mutant show, um, the DC years or the MMT years where you were like frustrated that the show wasn't going well. Did you ever get it or, or you were, you just caught up in the moment that you're actually doing a show. I, the, okay. So I, I, I always was the, the MMT years. I was always a little frustrated because I didn't utilize you. I didn't get to do as much back then. Which yeah. That was kind of a bummer. But then the, you know what, I, the, the, um, the EBR years, the frustration with the EBR, I'm always frustrated with something because things can always be better, you know? Yeah. But the EBR years, the thing that I didn't like about it was one hour. I thought that we, this show, we, we were just getting into a rhythm. Yeah. And then the guy before us would go four hours long and we'd, be thin. we'd start we get 45 minutes to do the show. So that, that's what I hated about the EBR days is because we just never really got into a rhythm. No. We, I spent twice as long driving than yeah. I did doing the show. But so that's, I, I wish we could have done a two hour or a 90 minute show or a two hour show up I there. I love times when we were able to do the two hour show, which was a couple, a couple times. And, uh, but that also shows, looking back, how much we wanted to do the show. You were willing to drive two hours for a 45 to an hour minute show. And, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't have to drive nearly as far as you did. But I still wanted to do – I did the show. You heard me do the show for 30 minutes sometimes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, the fun I it when, it, when it came to those times because I was like, I can't – That's been that's been the problem coming back is the consistency. We've done it really consistent on these shows. But on the on the Monday night show at WEBR, a lot of holidays were on Mondays. Oh yeah, that's right. At least one time a month, it seemed like there was a holiday. Yeah. And well, that little pretty... guy that was always like trying to, you know, when we knocked on the door, he was always, you know, doing his thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I oh, uh, I know. the The best ones that we did were when we we did those open mics at Jam and Java. Yeah. And then we would go do the show afterwards because then I felt like we, we did two shows at one night. And that was fun. And I usually get there early and we would do some, that we'd rehearse a few times when we actually used to rehearse. You know, I all, always thought, and I still think this, everything that we've, except when we first met, everything that we've done has been, we've had to do it quick. We've had to do it from different locations. And we've been able to be fairly successful with, not being able to practice that much and getting up doing a show. We barely got to really write together to do the radio show. And it's been, you know, we've had a, a, a long career, long distance. If we were ever in the same close location, I think pure magic, like the Coldplay song would occur. I, I can't, I can't argue with that. I, <laughs> I mean, we did the album in how long? Two weeks. Yeah, I mean, we just like, like 10 days, like 10 days. I came in, we worked on some songs, and then we knocked the thing out. And then uh, we did it. So I remember one song we wrote literally that, that night, that day. 
Didn't you come to the movie theater one time and we rode upstairs? I think we rode it that day and then we recorded the it that night. We were in the office, I think. Mm -hmm. So I, I do, and I tell people this all the time, that also I would, uh, like, like when I was, like when we did the show and I saw you on a regular basis, and we did the show and I was with Talitha, you and Talitha are positive influences on my life. And my life was in a like more, uh, I don't want to say productive because I'm productive now, but it was more of a less risk taking lifestyle. Mm -hmm. then. Not that it's not that I'm, you know, balancing a motorcycle on like the edge of high knob or something, not like that, but, uh, but it was better. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what an example. Well, I was, I was making a full house example. Have you ever seen that episode of, Full house. Oh, and where Jesse. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I remember what I wanted to talk about. Okay. Okay. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Well, I'll, I'll work it in towards the end. And I was just saying that those days where I knew it would be like, you all would keep me on the straight and the narrow and not even having to say anything because I'd be like, ooh, I don't really want to disappoint Jake. I don't really want to disappoint Talitha. You know what I mean? Does that yeah, make sense? And Lacey, yeah. I feel that way about Lacey too. I'm like, oh, I, don't, I, I hate. Like I, you know, I do things. I'm like, oh, I'm not proud of. But she's my, my quote priest. That you know, she can't really, uh, you know. I guess she could say something, but she chooses not to. Yeah. So I mean, you know, I, you are the company that you keep, as they as they always say. Yeah. Talitha and I are pretty chill people. <laughs> well, I'm wondering if, like, now getting a little bit older here, you know, entering my 30s, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm thinking. I bet I'm the friend that like Jake and Talitha, like, you know, you all have like your life together more. And then like, I'm, I'm the one like, Oh, if, if he could just get on that path, he'd be good. I, I think I, I think I turned into that. You know what I mean? I'm like, I, 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 I don't, I don't even know how, Hey, uh, we have grease bucket joined oh, us. Oh, grease bucket. <laughs> this show is just going off the rails. It really is. And we've had quite a few people tune in on uh, Facebook as well. I don't, I don't know. I think we're in similar places. I mean, like, we, we've taken different paths career-wise because re really what it is is we've had to figure out ways to afford our habit, which is doing media not from a coast. Right. So we've had to figure out ways to, to – and so we've done it differently. Um and that, that, to me, that's the biggest difference is we just, like, we just do it differently. But I think in the end, we still, we're both still working towards the same goal. We're both still doing the same, the same, things the same way. And I feel really, I do feel, although 2020, you know, COVID's been crappy for everyone. Mm. But in addition to that, all the heartbreak and everything that I felt, and I'm sure other people have as well, I feel like a lot of positive creativity has come out of that. So mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty happy about that. So what did you have to uh, share with us? You had something cool. This is something completely different. Though. Okay. That's okay. I feel like I, this is going to come from so out of left field. Like my topics are just trash oh, compared to what we've been talking about. I watched so stupid. I watched the pilot for the, for the reboot of – uh, Saved by the Bell yesterday. Oh, I've heard not heard good things. Really? Yeah. I I laughed like fifteen times. Really? Okay. <laughs> I was like, I didn't even know it was a thing. My sister told me, and then I saw that you could watch some stuff on Peacock for free. Yeah. So I watched it last night, and I was like, I, all I watched was the pilot because that's the only thing is free. But I was like. I laughed probably 10 times in the whole episode. Okay, okay. I'm going to watch which, it. Which is more than I laugh in a lot of shows. Now, where did you watch it at? Is it just an, an online series? Peacock. Yeah, it's on NBC's new streaming service. Okay. But you got to sign up, but it's free for okay. free to watch the pilot episode. Every other episode, you have to get the subscription, which I don't probably 15 bucks a month but I'm not I'll watch it that. tonight then I'll watch it tonight but you just watch it see what you think about it because I Mark Pro uh, the, most people Dustin Diamond doesn't make an appearance right and Lisa Turtle doesn't make an appearance the two crazies from the show yeah I feel but, like I hope that my career doesn't go the way theirs has yeah, because no, they went you know she I, what a, did she go crazy she went she has like a severe bipolarism and she's uh -huh. had it look like some bad plastic surgery 
Lark Voorhees. Yeah. yeah. Looks like she's had her lips done or something. They didn't turn out real well. Um, I'm going to look her up real quick. But uh, I think uh, Tiffany Thiessen was – oh, she looks a little bit crazy. Yeah, she does, doesn't she? Yeah. Um, Tiffany uh, – Tiffany Amber Thiessen or whatever she is nowadays. She was in, she had a moment in it that was really good. Um, Mark Paul Gosler's really like, he's got some moments and they're pretty good, but like Mario Lopez, I thought was so good. Uh, really? He was in like a, a KFC. Uh, he played Colonel Sanders in like this lifetime movie. It was like a short film a few days ago. Did it really? Yeah. Mario Lopez. <laughs> yeah. All right, but put in Mario Lopez, and it'll it'll be like a couple days ago, and it'll be he plays like Colonel Sanders in the short film. I think it's Lifetime. Uh, well, he like um, but he doesn't look that much different as AC Slater, does he? I, he looks. Oh, I. See. <laughs> he looks weird as as Colonel Sanders. Yeah, so they play off of the old show. It's not the same show, which is, well, it's kind of the same show, except it's like an older version of the show. But he's like so, I think he's so good in his role. Uh, and then uh, 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 my, something, what's the guy's name? Higgins? Oh, uh, shoot. What's the. Um... Did Jesse come back? Yeah, she's back. She's like one of the producers for the show. So she's like a big player. For it, uh, she got Showgirls money and made Say by the Bell Reaper. <laughs> yeah, um, did you know that Showgirls money movie when it first came out it lost money, but over the DVD sales had made over one hundred million dollars. Really? The I press? Watched I watched the, the first part of it. It was awful. I cut it off. I watched the VH1 version of it, where they <laughs> where they superimpose like underwear on <laughs> I think I remember when they aired that I think I remember that but you would think with all the press about that but I guess most people were afraid to like go to the movie theater because it's an NT17 movie yeah, yeah. but once it comes out like then you can hide in your closet and watch it or something the acting in it was was god awful oh it was so bad I, I, I honestly made it probably I tried to watch it maybe 10 years ago I, I made it maybe 20 minutes I was like this is awful oh yeah it was awful. so bad it was so bad, but but, um, yeah, I I thought it was good. Like it's an older version of it, and they 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 make fun of the original. Now I don't know if beyond the pilot they do this, but in the pilot they make fun of the old show. But it's it's just so much fun. Okay, like, I'll have to watch it. I don't know. Prove me. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm crazy. Oh, it's just on, on the NBC streaming service then, right? Yeah, it's called Peacock. Okay. So. Okay. But yeah, I thought it was. I watched it last night. And I was like, I'm pleasantly surprised. Well, they did a save. Uh, they um, Fresh Prince of Bel Air like a 30th anniversary. Oh, I saw that they like got together. Yeah, I don't know if it's aired yet or anything like uh, that. But I think that was a few weeks ago. I, we read about it. I was doing the Another Gear podcast, and uh, we talked about it on there a little bit. If you so, could reboot any show, what would you reboot? And let's say the actors could even still like they like you could bring them back to life. Man, I you know I would have to say you know maybe reboot. I don't know how it would play now, and I wasn't a big fan at the time. But maybe reboot Twenty One Jump Street. I mean, I know I, they did a movie, but I mean the movie. You know, I've never seen the movie. The movies. I know there's two of them. Yeah. And I can't think of any show right off, like, really, really. Or, you know, like, some of the shows, like the show The Wonder Years. You couldn't really reboot, reboot that, I guess. Why not? I don't know. I mean, it would be, I mean, it would just, because I think it, I think it takes place in the 70s, Wonder Years. Yeah, but if you, if, like, if you didn't have to, like, there were no limitations. I mean, like, you can do that show in a lot of ways. You could do it like someone reflecting back upon the 80s. That might be cool because, like, mm -hmm. 80s is really big right now. Or if you wanted to do, like, you know, it's it's modern day, but they're looking back at their childhood in the 90s. That could be really cool. I mean, it wouldn't like have to be the Wonder Years exactly, but maybe that kind of a vibe and looking back at your childhood. Because I don't know if there's any shows that do that. Mm -hmm. 
But um, I have, like, I was talking last night, and I think I said recent show, and uh, Felicia was like, no, and I meant recent, like, in the last 10 years. It's hard for me to watch shows alone. Yeah. Well, last night I said that? What? That, like, you said something, about, I said, is this a recent show? And you said, no, and I said, I mean, within recent is in the last 10 years. Oh, yeah. That was last night. Mm-hmm. What yeah. was that? What was the show? What was the show? The 44 Force? The 4400. Yeah. The 4400. Never heard of it. I've never heard of it. I mean, I had never heard of it. That's really good. But it was like, what, three years old? Yeah. 2004 is when it came. Oh, it Wait, came there was a. It started in 2004. Maybe that was just the episode we were on oh. when it came. Yeah. I've never, yeah, never heard of it before. Am I running long? No, you, sure? you can always kick me out at any I'm moment. I'm not going to kick you uh, out. One, at any moment here, you could just see arms reach and just pull me off screen. <laughs> <laughs> or a hook. Yeah, a hook. Yeah. That would be a, or, or a clown be with, a, with a broom just sweeping I'd be away. trying to hold on to the side of the screen. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, um, I'm excited yeah. about a lot of things that we have. Now, Felicia, Jake said that we should watch the um, reboot of the Saved by the Bell. Was it good? I it? love. I I thought it was fun. It was ridiculous, which I really appreciate. Ooh, she had some shears. Oh and my like gosh! Snipping at me. Oh boy. Yeah, I, I really. I was really into Saved by the Bell back in the day. Oh, I was too. Like AC Slater was my guy. He said that AC Slater shines above. And he's all. he's exactly the same minus the mullet. He's the same guy. He doesn't age. No. Oh, oh. <laughs> him. Rob Lowe and Leonardo DiCaprio up until about three years ago. And then that one guy. And Bob he, Costas. Uh, there's another guy. He, uh, he's like in a lot of the, He's like in I Love You Man. Oh, you're talking about. Um, the, the dark-headed guy. He he's he's the, Ant-Man. He plays Ant-Man. He's like awesome and I can't think of it. He doesn't Seagull? Really, no, he's the other guy. Uh, oh, Paul. Uh, oh, Paul. Oh, Rudd. Paul yeah, Rudd. Paul doesn't seem to age that much. Oh, he's, he's still the guy him. from from uh, uh, Clueless. Yeah. Now, there's something. It's kind of cool. Now, I, I since I'm um, I'm like everyone. I'm gonna I want to be everyone's charity case in the show. So Jake buys me some shoes. <laughs> Lisha ordered me a shirt today <laughs> on Amazon, and it's a shirt from Pineapple Express. Uh, oh. If you look it up, Jake, it's a cool shirt. Now, Felicia pointed it out last night. She said, is that a, a shark and a fox? I thought it was a fox. And we looked it up, and it was indeed a cat. But put shark and cat and cat mouth shirt. Shark. No, it's a cat a shark eating cat shirt. Shark eating cat shirt. Yeah, yes. and it'll pop right up. <laughs> and I think it's a good shirt. I really do. I, I'm going to be um, happy to wear that around. Oh, that's cool. And isn't that a cool shirt? Yeah. No, I never had... Have you seen Pineapple Express before? Mm, it's a James Franklin, Seth Rogen. It's like a pot movie. I saw one of those movies. It so he been... has to wear this... I think he has it on the entire sh- movie. Yeah, they don't show But I never had noticed that that was the shirt until last night when she pointed it out. So I was like... You know, let me be a poser here, and uh, I like to get that shirt. And she was kind enough to take so, take my charity case in. That's a cool shirt. Yeah, I like it. I can so, take that. I'm all about a T right now. Yeah. No, I do. I I've I've been wearing some some old. You have any old band shirts? You have some, probably some Dave Matthews band. Shirts. Oh, I guess oh, I guess some old Dave Matthews. I got some uh, Carbon Leaf. Ross Copperman. You have a Ross Copperman? Probably somewhere. Yeah. If I had a Ross Copperman shirt, I'm sure I kept it. No, I, I do. I saw where Ross Copperman changed his um, Facebook photo or something today. It might have been on Instagram. But I do have a Ross Copperman uh, shirt from the uh, from when he was playing like the, the small clubs. Oh, I miss Ross Copperman. Me too. Oh, yeah. He changed it to like a color. Like red or like almost a color, a shade of red. Yeah. That's that's interesting. So that's kind of what stirred out stood out to me. He said new music coming soon. Very cool, man! It's almost five thirty. I don't know if you have 
Yeah, I gotta get going in, a, in moments. Um, okay, big question. Yeah. Uh, what am I gonna eat for dinner tonight? Do you have any specific options? Oh, there's always Mexican food. Yeah. But I, I'm, I'm going between Mexican, Chinese, I would sushi. go with Chinese. I was going to say Chinese. Chinese? Yes. That's what I would do. Now, I did eat out. Now, this is interesting. Remember when we shot the short film with Lakin um, at the Stir Fry Cafe many years ago? I do. I had that awful shot from the cut, like through the glass. Yeah. No, <laughs> you, you hate that shot? That's how oh, it was the worst shot because it had nothing to do with anything. I was like, ooh, that would be kind of cool. No, it's trash. But yes, so, I do remember that. So we shot, so, so we went there and ate the other day and I tried, I think it was a type of sushi, but without any shellfish or anything like that. Oh, okay. And uh, it was, I just had like one piece. It was good. And I also tried sushi with eel. Eel. Okay. It wasn't as good as the other piece, but I just ate one just in case I was allergic. Oh. I didn't want to die there. Yeah, no, that's not the place to go. Um, if I if I am dying and I'm able, I'm going to grab the camera and at least film it. So I'm at least going to do that. I if you're gonna try like one of the, my favorite like the safest sushi you can get, they have um, the, some places you go, they have uh, like red. Oh shoot, what do they call like um, sweet potato? Okay. It's like it's like a uh, um, deep fried sweet potato. Okay. That is then sushified. That's really that's that's a good safe one that that's not going to give you any reaction, any kind of poison or reaction. <laughs> no, have you ever tried the dumplings? I never had a dumpling in my life. Oh, I could make a meal. Now we went last last uh, December. Victoria and I and her friend went to this place uh, right near the capital of um, the, I think maybe it's called the Verizon center now, but mm -hmm. it was a few, a few store, a uh, few shops up really great dumplings. The, the, the meal was good, but the dumplings were a standout and we got dumplings the other day equally as good. And I could have just made a meal out of the dumplings. Yeah. I have never ever had, dumplings before i've only heard amazing things about them but i've never had them before yeah very good very good got to one of these days so yeah chinese is what i would i would go for if i were chinese you. that might be the play yeah yeah all right cool thank you for that <laughs> i'm glad that i could help in some way. that was my biggest question that's the only thing i wanted to get figured out because i we wanted something the good this show to this journey of what jake is having for dinner tonight. what am i going to eat for dinner tonight so everyone, thank you for tuning in. It's been a fun show, Jake. Thank you for coming aboard, as always. And uh, check out on the movies. We just did the Lighthouse, and there's just been a couple shows posted on the YouTube page um, this last couple of days. Also, check out King Network TV, powered by Roku TV, every Wednesday at 7 p.m. And I think I might be wrong, but I think Fridays at midnight we're on as well. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, man, it's been fun. And we yeah. have uh, a good a movie next week and another show. So uh, I hope you have a good week. I hope all the audience members have a good week, Instagram. That's so, uh, man, have a good day. I'm Adam. I'm Jake. Have a good weekend. And we're the other people. See you, man.